Hello friends, this video on polymers part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the classification based on the molecular force. Now if you see, if you see this polymers, some polymers are soft, for example polythene. Some are very hard. These are soft. These are almost very hard. Unbreakable. These two. These are soft also and elastic also. Tires, but little heavy also. These t-shirts, they are not elastic. Okay. These pipes, which is used in uh, bathroom fittings, they are a little soft, not very hard, and but they have good tensile strength. So you see, some are soft, some are tough. This is tough. Some are elastic. But these are all polymers. So there has to be some reason, there has to be some property which determines why some are soft, some are hard, some are elastic. So these mechanical properties are actually governed by intermolecular. Force. These are governed by intermolecular force, and this intermolecular force can be vulnerable force, it can be hydrogen bond, it can be uh, any nuclear force or just uh, interaction, dipole, dipole, or something. So, we are all governed by these nuclear force. So based on these, intermolecular force because it's critical now because the reason why we have so many polymers is they have so many different properties. So these properties helps us to use these polymers with different aspects. Obviously you want to use rubber to create fabric. Rubber will be used to make tires. You won't use backlight to make fabric. Correct. You won't use rubber to make a carry bag. So they are different. They are all different. Different properties. And the reason they have different properties is because of intermolecular force. So, based on these intermolecular force, these polymers are again classified into four different paths elastomers, fibers, thermoplastic, and thermoplastic. So, we discuss about each of these. Very important. It's not, see, the source is important, but just to know, okay, this is the source of the polymer. The structure was important, branch, chain, and Linear, but again, the structure uh, will not explain much about the property. There is an intermolecular force because of the structure, anyway, yeah, that explains these properties. And based on the polymerization reaction, it does not make much difference. Even, even you have a example nylon 66 or polythene, just by looking at that, it's difficult to tell which polymerization reaction was followed to prepare this. So, those things are not that critical. This classification is really, really critical. Okay. So the first is elastomers. The word elastomers itself, we can say elastic. Elastic. And these are rubbers. The moment you think of elastic, you think of rubber. Okay. And they are solid with elastic properties, they are rubbers. These, since they are elastic, that means they are held together by the weakest one over one force. Weakest force, I think. The weakest force is known as one over one force. So they are held together. By weakest force. Since they are held together by the weakest force, they are elastic. They can be stretched. But sometimes when you talk about the use of rubber to make tire, we add some sulfur molecules here. And with that, you are adding some extra bonds. And thus the rubber is not, this tire is not that much elastic. It is a little hard. Because for tire we need that kind of rubber. We need a little hard rubber. Okay. So that is a different process. The process is called vulcanization. We'll talk about that. But as such, these elastomers, they are held together by a very weak force of attraction. Okay. And thus they are. Last. If you don't, if you want really weak rubber, 
we don't need to add sulfur. The natural rubber is too weak, um, very elastic rubber. If you want to make it hard, you have to add some sulfur. Okay? So, we'll talk about that later. The, the vulcanization of tires. Okay. And the good example of this last two much are Duna S, Duna N, Neoprene. Is uh, made from isoprene. These are the examples of right. This is what you see is Buna S. Neoprene, as I told, if you want to see the neoprene, we'll talk about that. So neoprene is CH2, CH double E. So it is made from isoprene. This is isoprene. From this, you make neoprene. And you will see that it has cis uh, neoprene and trans isoprene and neoprene, and it will have different properties. Also. And that will also be based on the intermolecular force because that will be based on the different kind of bonds they have. We'll talk about that. Just understand that this is an elastomer, they have very less force of attraction. This is the, this is the most, most important point that you have to take from the slide. They are held together by the weakest force of attraction. And since they are held together by the weakest force of attraction, they are last. The next is fibers. Fibers, they are the thread forming solid. It forms thread. For example, in this case, badminton racket, you need threads. Right? This is elastomers. This is fibers. They are thread forming. Okay? Sometimes we use this thread. This thread is also nylon thread. And the same thread is used to make fabric. This nylon or sometimes polyester is all, you can actually make thread out of it. But from tire, from the rubber, you can't make a thread. Can you? Or the rubber eraser which you use in the schools, can you make a thread kind of uh, structure from that? It is difficult, it will not be strong, it will be very weak. But the you see the thread which is used in the badminton racket or the thread which is used uh, uh, to stitch the clothes. These threads are pretty strong. But they are polymers. Since they are strong now, that means there has to be some strong force of attraction here. So here typically we have strong intramolecular hydrogen bond. Right? So close packing of these chains give the crystal nature. So they have this closed pack, crystal structure. They're held together by hydrogen bond. As I told, hydrogen bond is a strong bond. So this guy have a very good elastic modulus. So elastic modulus or the modulus or the young modulus, tensile modulus, these are all the same. This modulus is nothing but Stress by strain. This is something that we have learned in physics. Okay. So they, they have very high modulus. Very, very high. So they have very high tensile strength. So let me write here. High tensile strength. Modulus. Okay, high tensile strength, high modulus, and they form thread like structure and they have hydrogen bond. So, if you see, there are different properties, and the different properties because of the intermolecular force. They were held together by the weak force of attraction, they are held together by a strong force of attraction. Okay, they'll break, but they'll not change the shape easily. Badminton racket will break and not change the sequence. And they, you can actually make thread out of it. That is the best important part. And that's called, that's why it's called fibers. So the word, when you think of the word fiber, you think of thread. Correct. And that's how it is. It's a very high force of attraction between them. Okay. So, thermoplastic, you see the name thermo is what? Thermo means heat. Right? Thermal is temperature. It has something to do with the heat. So in this case, 
actually these molecules are capable of repeatedly softening or heating and hardening on cooling. So it becomes soft on heating and again it becomes hard on cooling. And this is because they are linear branch long chain and they have intermolecular force of attraction. Intermolecular force of attraction. And please note this intermolecular force of attraction is intermediate between elastomers and fibers. So here if you see fibers had more strong force of attraction between them. That's why they had very strong thing. They were strong. And if we talk about elastomers. Elastomers had all the more weaker force of attraction, and that's why they were elastic. Either they had this is all based on force of attraction. Again, the whole classification is based on intermolecular force of attraction. So fibers had a stronger force of attraction, so they were hard. Right? They they had high tensile strength. Elastomers we had all the more stronger force of attraction, less very less force of attraction, so they were elastic. This is somewhere in between. These are long chains and these chains are held together by some intermediate force of intermolecular force of attraction. Okay. Example is polythene. You see, this is a polythene. All of these molecules are joined together. This is one monomer. This is polythene or polystyrene, polyvinyl. These are example polyvinyl is used to make polyvinyl pipes. This is polythene that is used to make uh, bags. Okay, this is thermoplastic. So the good part about this about this is repeatedly softening on heating and hardening on cooling. And this is why because they are linear, slightly linear, or I can say slightly branched. Okay, plus they have small, very less force of attraction. Okay. So it's typically linearly or slightly branched. The next type again based on the molecular force is thermosetting. Again, this is thermo is heat and setting is set. So once you set by heating, that's all. You can't do no repeated heating or no repeated softening. On heating. So once you heat, once you make it, that's all. Even if you heat, that's why it is used in the uh, utensils, right? Even if it is very hot, it won't melt. It won't melt easily. This melamine also, it won't melt easily. So repeated softening on heating and hardening on cooling is on the order of this. Okay? These thermosetting plastics, they have cross lengths or heavily branched. You see, they are cross length. A heavy branch. Because of this extensive cross-linking, they have very, very high force of attraction between them. See? Heavily cross-linked, heavily branched. This is backlight. Because of this, of this extensive cross-linking, when you actually mold it, when you heat it, when you prepare it for, for the first time. In the first time preparation only, this type of heavy cross linking is formed and thus it can't be reused. Even if you hit it back, these cross links are difficult to break. Extremely hard. The example is uh, melamine, bacalite, and urea formaldehyde. This is nothing but uh, melamine. Okay. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.